Today we're going to talk about Job, the book of Job, the story of Job, the story about a man who was called blameless and upright by God in the Bible. This is a big one for people when they find out Job wasn't dealing with a supernatural cosmic Satan. So come along with me as I talk a bit about what the heck was going on for Job and who the Satan was in that story. So first of all, what we need to do is look at the passage that talks about this Job. In Job chapter 1, we find there was a man in the land of Uz, whose name was Job, and that man was perfect and upright, and one that feared God and shunned evil. Job 1.1. 1, 1. Then we see in Job chapter 2, and here's where the rubber hits the road for a lot of people who believe Satan is real. And there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan also came among them to present himself before Yahweh. So there's several things we need to deal with when looking at this passage to find out what was going on for Job. We need to look at what the Satan was, who the Satan was. We need to find out who the sons of God were, and we need to find out what before the Lord meant. Because all those things had meaning much different to the writer of Job than they have to us. And the writer of Job, no one knows who that was today, but we do know what style of writing the book of Job was. And it wasn't prose, it wasn't historic literature, it was actually a, a style of writing called Agadah, or Haggadah, which is a Hebrew word for telling. And it was designed to tell a story, not designed to impart significant, specific facts from a period that is long ago lost and forgotten. So let me tell you about an article by a writer named Bill Long. Long writes about the translation of the word Satan, which is what we see in Job chapter 2, Satan. The word occurs a few times, in fact, a dozen in the book of Job. It's always preceded by a special definite article. Ha is the definite article, which means it really is saying the Satan. So if we look at Mr. Long's article, he says about the translation of the word, standing behind the translation of Satan, in almost all translations of the Hebrew word Hasatan, in Hebrew, the ha is the definite article. If we were therefore to take the name directly over to English, it would be the Satan. Every time the word is used in the first two chapters of the book of Job, an amazing 12 times, the creature is called the Satan, ha Satan. Never once is that creature called Satan as a literal creature or a proper noun. Thus, Long goes on, as any good translator must do, you must render what you have. It is the Satan. Therefore, the word Hasatan is more of a title than a proper name. More of a designation than an appellation. And the word, friends, means adversary. It simply is referring to a human adversary of some sort. Is it possible to find a human adversary in Job's tale? How can we know what was going on in Job unless we know who the sons of God were? Well, the sons of God came in before the Lord, is what we're told, and the adversary came in with him. Often people think the sons of God are angels, celestial angels that met in the courtroom at, of God, of Yahweh, and Satan came in as the crown prosecutor. Now that's a fairly ancient rabbinic interpretation of this passage, but that's based on mystic, Kabbalistic views that were borrowed from the land of Persia and the Greeks, not so much from biblical Hebraic thinking. So, the sons of God, quite simply, were men that came in to worship in a temple environment before the Lord. So to know who the sons of God are, we can find it other places in the Bible, in the scriptures that teach about the sons of God. In John 1, 2, But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God. In Romans 8, 14, For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Romans 8, 19, For the earnest expectation of the creature waiteth for the manifestation of the sons of God. That's not talking about waiting for the manifestation of angels. It's talking about waiting for human people to come into line with the thinking that agrees with the Creator. Here's a couple more just for you to think of. And because you are sons of God, God has sent forth the Spirit of His Son into your hearts, crying, Abba, Father. That's from Galatians 4. In 1 John 3 we find, Behold, what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us, that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore, the world doesn't know us because it didn't know Him. So again, we're talking about human men. So to know what Job's issues were, we have to relate the sons of God and Job to being human men, not cosmic angels as we've all been taught. So it's coming clear, the Satan isn't a, isn't a celestial cosmic being, it's actually a human adversary, because the word actually Satan, ha-Satan means the adversary. The sons of God are not either 
uh, celestial beings from a heavenly abode. They're human men as well. And where did they all go? They went before the Lord. This is key. Please, if you get anything from the book of Job, get this. Before the Lord does not mean a group of celestial beings that moved into God's throne room. Before the Lord is a term readily used throughout Scripture. Every time we see it, it's talking about a human being going into an earthly temple-style environment where the representative of the Lord or the representative of God or Yahweh is present. That's what before the Lord means. We find several places, and please go ahead and search your electronic Bible or your computer-based Bible software to look up the term, phrase, before the Lord. We, For instance, we see when Moses went in before the Lord to speak with him, he took the veil off until he came out, and he came out and spoke to the children of Israel. That's one place. Another place that indicates before the Lord is not a heavenly abode, it's an earthly environment. In Exodus 34, 24, I'm going to cast out the nations before you and enlarge your borders. Neither shall any man desire thy land when you shall go up to appear before the Lord your God three times in every year. Always referring to a temple environment placed here on earth where human representatives, the sons of God, go to worship and talk to the representative of the Lord getting advice about issues, matters, and trying to connect with the divine, as so many people have tried to do throughout history. In fact, Menachem Heron, he's a uh, university professor from the Hebrew University in Israel, he's argued quite well that the phrase before the Lord indicates a temple setting. And maybe we should agree with the scripture too. Let's just agree with what the terms are saying as scripture defines scripture. It becomes quite simple then to understand what's going on in Job. Talking about agreeing with scripture, one of the most important things we can do is agree with the testimony of Job himself. Job himself says that man and God are doing these evil things. He never once blames the supernatural cosmic Satan. If we look to Job and find his wife in chapter 2 saying, Job, why don't you curse God and die? What does Job say? He doesn't say, well, why would I curse God when Satan's doing this to me? He actually says, why should we not accept evil at the hands of God when we already accept good? He clearly states evil's coming from the Creator, his God, not from some secondary, smaller God with evil intention. Now, I want to provide just a brief list of some of the places where Job himself gives us the answer to who's causing his problems. And I, I really assure you that if we take Job's testimony in this story for what's happening to him and who Job thinks is causing the problems, then we can't misstep, as so many have done for so many years. Job, in fact, says... In Job 19, know now that God's overthrown me, he says, and he's, he's compassed me with his net. He says, behold, I cry out of wrong, but I am not heard. I cry out, but there is no judgment. Then he says, he, referring to his God, has fenced up my ways that I cannot pass. He goes on in that chapter. Read chapter 19 of Job, verses 6 to 12. He says in Job chapter 2, for it increases. You hunt me as a fierce lion. He's referring to his God. Job chapter, uh, in Job chapter 10 verse 16 is where you'll find that. And then he says in 10 verse 2, I'm going to say unto God, don't condemn me. Show me where you contend with me. He knows who's contending with him and he's not referring to a supernatural Satan in any way, shape, or form. Here's a big one in Job 69. He tears me in his wrath, completely referring to his God. God's delivered me to the ungodly. Now this is where we find Job knows exactly that his God orchestrated his life, and now he's using the hands of wicked men to do all this harm upon him. God has delivered me to the ungodly and turned me over into the hands of wicked men. Job 16.11. And I can quote many more of these, and you can find these in Satan Christianity's Other God, Volume 1 of the Imagine No Satan series. If you want a free copy of that by ebook, just email me at jrbrayshaw at scog.ca. Happy to send you a copy of that. Point being, many times throughout the entire book, Job says it's evil coming upon him by the hands of men because his God orchestrated it. Even we go right to the end of the book, Job chapter 42, we find Job's meeting with his friends after everything he's gone through, and it says, Then, then came there unto him all his brethren and all his sisters and all they that had been of his acquaintance before. A pretty big party celebrating for some reason. They ate bread with him in his house, and they bemoaned him, and they comforted him over all the evil that Yahweh, the Lord, had brought upon him. Even all his friends and family knew that there was no evil supernatural Satan 
bringing evil upon Job. It was done by Job's creator. Why wouldn't we believe Job? Job testifies clearly to who it was that caused his problems for him. And I know this from what the, the words and phrases in Scripture line up to be. The sons of God are human men. Before the Lord means an earthly temple environment. And Satan, Ha-Satan, refers to a human adversary. But how can humans be this? How can humans inflict such evil upon Job? Well, it's a fairly easy to know. And if we take even one instance of affliction upon Job, the boils he received, I for one have seen many people, old and young, come down with serious boils, rashes, and skin issues simply from stress in their life. Stress is a killer, and it often manifests in unmitigating boils that cause much pain and discomfort. So Job was very stressed over the loss he suffered at the hands of the wicked man that God allowed to get in his life, and he came down with a bad case of boils. These men that came after Job in such a heinous, malicious way were extremely jealous men. Sadia Gayon, from the middle, um, about the 15th century actually, he's a rabbinic scholar and he affirms that the men in Job were the Satan. And he says they were jealous men. He actually says that these Satans in Job were men who envied Job and it was not a cosmic monster. Now, if we look to how harmful jealousy can be in human relations, we just have to read Proverbs 27.4. Wrath is cruel, anger is overwhelming, but who is able to stand before jealousy? That's a huge question, and we can see how jealousy played out in Job's world. Jealous men went in before the Lord to a temple environment, and they were the adversary, the Satan, that went in amongst the, the good people that wanted to honor the Creator in the temple, the sons of God, and they afflicted Job with many harmful things which they had the power to cause and bring upon poor old Job.